some God. You are a miracle worker. You are a promise keeper. God, you are the lily in the valley. You are the bright and morning star. You are everything. You are the reason I get up in the morning and the same reason I go to sleep at night. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I could have lost my mind. I could have threw in the towel. But the truth of the matter is he's been good. Hallelujah. Come on, what better place? What better place to be than to be in the house of the Lord on a Friday night? Hallelujah. He's amazing. He's wonderful. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you. God, I want to take a moment just to thank you. Hallelujah. I always take everything and I ask you for everything. But I want to take this moment to thank you for everything. Thank you for life. Thank you for breath. Thank you for waking me up, God. God, a lot of people did not make it. I'm one of the ones who did. So therefore, God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you've given me life. You've breathed the Ruach Kadesh into me, oh God, which lets me know that there is more for me to do. There is more for me to do in this season. So as we are getting ready to go into praise and worship, can you just begin to lift up a sound? Come on, this is the fellas' night. We might as well just have church. Hallelujah. The thing says a man in Christ. So if we are in Christ, we might as well give God glory. We might as well give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're wonderful, Jesus. You're wonderful, Jesus. Come on, we're going to have church, so let's come on with it. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody clap your hand. No, 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 no. Can we do it one more time? Clap your hands. So clap your hands. One more time, do it again. Yeah, 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 Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to say, everybody clap your hand right here. Clap your hand right here. Do it one more time for me, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let's run this from the top, yeah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Can we do it again? Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you came my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth. To the cross, my death to pain. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I, you came from you came from heaven to us to save the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pain. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, come here. You came from you came from heaven to us. My death abated from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I, everybody clap your Everybody clap your hands tonight and night. Clap your hands tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's go from the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hey. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. 
I'm so glad you came to save us one more time. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Lord, I'm glad you came to save. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, you came from ever to ever to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to made from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I, you came from to show the way from the earth. My debt to pay the Lord, I need a Hey, you came from the to show the way from the earth. My debt to pay. Yeah, yeah. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Hey, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Yeah. Lord, you're awesome. Lord, you're awesome. Lord, you're awesome. You came from, you came from, and so the from the earth, my debt you paid, my, yeah, yeah, good idea. Everybody clap before. It's Friday night, we might as well have church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, now. you came, you came, you came, you came. You came from to show the way from the earth. My debt to pay now. My! Yeah, yeah, Lord, I live. You came from there to show the way. Sing oh, 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 Lord, I live, Lord, I lift your name on high. 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 Right here. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven 
want to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Hey, my dad to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I know it's a Friday night. <laughs> And we can be doing whatever we want to, but we're in the house of the Lord saying, Lord, I live today, on high. Nobody like you, God. Nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Can you just begin to lift up the name of Jesus? Come on. I believe something happens when men praise him. I believe something happens when men worship. Come on, if there's two or three in the house that would not mind just worshiping just for a moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. You came from heaven to earth. To show your way from the earth to the cross, my debt, my debt to pay from the cross to the very grave, from the grave to the sky. Hey, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah. Nobody like you, God. Oh. Hey. Yes, Lord. He's an amazing God. He's a wonderful God. He's an awesome God. He's a true and living God. And without him, we are nothing. We are nothing without him. I feel good tonight. Hallelujah. I feel good tonight. And I'm even more excited because the room is filled with men. I believe something happens when men worship. I believe something happens when men praise. Can right now all of the men lift up a sound that will confuse the very works of the enemy? Come on, giant, open up your mouth right here. Terrible sign. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, universal full gospel. Listen, I need you guys to focus, okay? <laughs> because I tell you, something happens when I get here. The ground is already it's already it's already mixed up. It's already ready to receive the glory. Hallelujah. It's already to receive the glory, which lets me know that this house is filled with prayer. It was easy for me to just go right into the throne of grace. It was easy for me to just get my attachment. It was easy for me to connect to heaven because somebody was praying. Somebody was praying. Somebody was praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. I feel God tonight. I feel God tonight. I feel God tonight. I feel God tonight. I don't know who you are. Maybe you are in need of an encounter tonight, but this is the night to get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a safe place. This is a safe place to let your guard down. Hallelujah. Let your guard down. So right now, without any form of fashion, can we just get lost in worship for a second? Can we just get lost? 
Don't worry about nobody looking at you. Don't worry about if you've got to break down and cry a little bit. This is your time. This is, this is for us. Tonight is for us. Is that all right? Can we get what we need tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. I feel a little, <coughs> a little comfortable. I feel a little comfortable. Can we just have just a little few minutes of church? Is that all right? Can we just have some hand clapping, foot stopping church real fast? Is that all right? Is that all right? That's all right. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, Hosanna, bless it. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my soul. Come on, let's do it again. Oh, magnify him. Oh, for he, y'all sound good. Oh, oh, for he, come on, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Hey. Blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Everybody, clap your hands. Hey. Come on, let's have some joy. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, oh, for he is worthy to be Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed, blessed be, blessed be the rock. 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 Hey. Blessed be the rock. Jesus is 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 the rock. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. 
rock, hold on to the rock, hold on to, hold on to the rock, hold on to the rock, hold on to, hold on to the rock. Everybody clap, yo! Oh! Come on, put your sanctified hands together. Ha! Come on, come on. Everybody clap your hands. Listen, I get joy when I think about, 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 hey, that's what he's done, and that's what he's done, that's what he's done, that's what he's done, he woke me up, that's what he's he started me on my very way. That's what he's done. He put no clothes on my back. That's what he, he put put shoes on my feet. He put food up on my table. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. Everybody clap yo. Everybody clap, yo! Clap, 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 clap! Come on, you can put your hands together. Hey! I got one right with the music. Yeah, then he loved me, died and he saved me, buried he carried my sins all away, and rise and he justified it. Live and he loved me, died and he saved me, buried he carried my sin. Free me forever, one day. Live and he loved me, died and he saved me, buried he carried my sins away. And right, free me. Rise and he justified, rise and he freed me, freed me for rise and he justified, freed me, right, freed me, rise and he justified, 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 freed me. Free me, free me, free me. I was lost, deep in sin, far from the peaceful sun, sinking to rise no more. But the master, the master, he heard my despairing cry. He freed me. He freed me. Everybody clap, yo. Come on, everybody clap, yo. Savior, good God, my 
my Savior. Clap your hands. Stop your feet. Do your dance. Do, 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 do your dance. Hey, listen. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Come on, can y'all help me? Can't, can't, can't. Can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody, do me like Jesus, he's my, come on, can we run this in, hell, yeah. can't nobody do me like Jesus, I can't nobody do me like Jesus, I can't nobody do me like Jesus, I can't nobody do me like Jesus. Listen, follow me. Listen. Say nobody. 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 Listen. And I can't find no. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. No, 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 no. I can't find nobody. Look high and low can find. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I can find nobody. I can find nobody. Nobody to my left. Nobody to my right. Nobody in front. Nobody behind. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Everybody clap, yo. Come on, we might as well have church. Come on, clap. Oh! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can we, can we lift up our front of his praise? Come on, we can do better than that. Can we lift up a thunderous praise? If God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody, nobody. Nobody, nobody. Nobody, nobody. Yeah. Nobody, nobody. Nobody like him. Come on, we can lift up Jesus right here. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up Jesus right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, men, make some noise. Come on, men, make some noise. Men, make some noise. Hallelujah. 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 So, Father, we thank you for this day because this is the day that you have made and we have entered into your courts with thanksgiving and we have come into your courts with praise. We will be thankful unto you and we bless your holy and your righteous name for you are a good, good Father. Hallelujah. And that's who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the new mercies that we see on today because great is your faithfulness unto us. So, Father, we thank you for this time that you have allowed us to come together as people of like precious faith. We thank you for those that have not forsaken themselves to assemble together in your name. Hallelujah. And, God, we don't take it for granted that we are here on a Friday night. So many other places we could have been, God. 
so many other places the men could have been. But God, I thank you right now that they thought it not robbery to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Father, I ask that you will breathe on us right now. Hallelujah. And I thank you for every person that is assembled under the sound of my voice, every person that's in the building, everyone that's watching on the live stream. We thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. And we declare and decree a blessing. Hallelujah. We declare and decree that you will pour out your goodness on us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for our Bishop, Dr. Scotland Bailey. Hallelujah. We thank you for our First Lady, Elder Lashona Fields. God, we thank you for our overseers, Bishop Herbert and Dr. Marsha Bailey. God, we thank you for the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, our Pastor Sharon Richardson. And we thank you for everyone that's here on tonight. And God, we thank you that you will anoint him afresh, God, right now. Give him the word for the house on tonight. Build him up on his most holy faith right now. We thank you for the anointing that's in the room on tonight. We thank you for healing, salvation, and deliverance. We thank you that we'll never be the same after having had this encounter with you on tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for these men in Christ that have assembled God. Hallelujah. And we thank you that you give us strategy. You give us resources, knowledge, information, but above all, wisdom to carry out the assignment that you have for us individually and collectively. Hallelujah. We thank you that we will be impactful we thank you that every person that we come in contact with, that we will make a positive impartation in their life. We thank you that they will see us, and by this will they know that we are your disciples by the love that we have one to another. And God, we thank you right now, and we turn the balance of the service over to you. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Because when we know... We know when you do it your way that everything will turn out right. And we thank you and praise you and give you all the glory. And it is in that matchless name that we say amen. 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 Come on, get out your seat and greet somebody on tonight. Come on, let's move about. Let's shake somebody's hand. Say hello. Introduce yourself to somebody that you maybe didn't know before you came through the door. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Hallelujah. Come on, it's nothing like when men get together. We thank God for the women in the house. Come on, we thank God for the females. But it's nothing like when men get together. It's like the oil that ran down the beard ran down from the head of Aaron down to his beard even down to his skirts hallelujah 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 come on God deserves our worship God deserves our praise all that men will exalt me all that men will lift up my name hallelujah all that men would praise him. All that men would lift him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like a sweet smelling savor in his ear, in his nostrils. It's like a sweet smelling savor in his nostrils. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Lift up your hands. Say something to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Amen. We thank God for all of you that have made your way out here on tonight. And we thank God is no goodness of our own that we are not consumed. No goodness of our own that we are here 
Just one more time, I'm sorry. I, I got to celebrate this man. This man that has been on the earth for over 86 years. Come on, y'all, help me. He's been doing ministry for over 57 years. He is a father of the city of Jersey City. He is a bishop in the Lord's church. Come on, he is a general in the body of Christ. He is still standing on the wall. Come on, help me to celebrate the founding pastor of Universal Full Gospel Church, Bishop Dr. Scotland Bailey. Come on, Bishop, we love you. We celebrate you, Bishop. We thank you for all of your hard work and your sacrifice. Hallelujah. Come on, help me to celebrate my friend. Bishop Graham Speaks is in the house tonight, y'all. Hallelujah. Come on, help me to celebrate my good friend, Pastor Sharon Richardson and World Outreach Christian Center. Come on, celebrate Pastor Shai, y'all. Come on. Amen. And I celebrate my wife hiding in the back, trying to blend in, standing by my side, always supporting whatever we do. My wife, Elder Lashona Fields. Amen. You may have your seats. I thank God for all of you. I'm going to move quickly because we have a man of God that can and will bring the word of God. A man of God that can and will bring the word of God. Amen. And I know he got to get home and work the whole week. You know how that is. And he don't live right around the corner. So we want to make sure that he get home to his wife safely. I don't want Pastor Rebecca chasing me down, talking about texting me, calling me, paging me. Where's my boo at? I left him with you. Where he at? He's safe. <laughs> He's safe, Bishop. But we thank God for getting all of you. And just real quick, by way of announcement, this is our kickoff for tonight. Men in Christ, that's our theme, Men in Christ. And tomorrow we'll be here Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m. Anybody want to come back and hang out with us tomorrow? I know they say the weather going to be a little uh, gnarly tomorrow, but I believe God going to clear it up between 3 and 5. Y'all ain't said nothing. I believe God is going to clear it up between 3 and 5. So if y'all come back out, tomorrow hang out with us we're just gonna break some bread we're gonna eat some good food play some games chop it up just you know have a nice relaxed environment we allowed the women females to join us tonight but tomorrow is men only so we can talk about and discuss some of those men topics we got the big tv if anybody want to watch the ncaa tournament we're going to have some good food popping off, so we're going to do some male things because they'll be wherever they at watching the women's tournament. We're going to watch the men's tournament tomorrow. Is that okay? All right, March Madness has kicked off, so we're going to be here just doing whatever, you know, enjoying ourselves because for some reason people think that black men can't get together and just have fun. They think whenever black men get together, it's all type of envy and jealousy and you know, those contests that they have, I, I don't want to say because females in the building and we on camera, so, you know, those those contests that they say men have, somebody thinking about it, just, yeah, I hold it to the mall, Bishop. <laughs> but we're going to be here, and we're going to ensure that we can come together and get along and just have some fun. Just come together and have some fun in the Lord's house. And, just enjoy one another. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. So at this time, we're going to prepare for our wealth building. We like to call this is our opportunity to build wealth in your family because sometimes people get it twisted. They think that they're giving to God and, you know, in a sense you are, but God has everything and everything belongs to him. So when you give, you're actually making an investment into yourself. Because if we know anything about the stock market and the Roth IRAs and all of those different things that you invest in, you know, 
you expect a return if you make an investment. If you put something in the bank and it has any type of interest rate or APR associated with it, when you go back, you expect it to be more than what you put in, right? Well, I promise you this. I promise you. Look at your name and say, he's promising me now. I promise you that any investment that you make into the house of God will yield a return. Did y'all hear me on tonight? Any investment that you make into the house of God will yield a return. And it will re yield a 100% return because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. And whatever he sends his word out to do, it shall accomplish that. It won't return to him void. So he lets us know that if you put seed in the ground, there's always time. This is a time for seeding and it's a time for harvest. And this is a time to make an investment to build wealth in your individual family and your collective family because this is good ground. All right, I heard one person. Let me say that again. I said this is good ground because in order for you to receive a harvest, in order for the ground to yield the harvest, you have to make sure that your seed is going into good ground. And I can assure you this ministry has not withstood the test of time for over 57 years, and you see what you see here if this wasn't good ground. Are y'all hearing me on tonight? So I promise you, tell him again, say he's promising again. And I'm not like the politicians and the elected officials and those people running for office right now and all those different people, but I promise you that an investment into this good ground will yield a return and God is going to give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, because he desires that we prosper and be in good health, even as our souls prosper. So you do your part, and I promise you that God will do his part. And on tonight, for our men's conference, we're going to ask everybody that can and will, if you would stand with the $200 seed, every man, every woman, everybody that's here, if you can and will to stand with the $200 seed, look in your seat pockets in front of you. There are envelopes that look like this in the seat pockets in front of you. If you don't have one and you need one, please let the usher know she bring you one. But in this envelope towards the bottom, towards the bottom, you'll see an empty slot. You'll see an empty slot there and whatever you're gonna give, just write in that empty slot men's conference. Now, if you have the 200, God bless you, but we never ask you to give what you don't have. Does that make sense? You can only give what you have, so if you don't have the 200, don't look at me with cock eyes like I asked you to do something that's impossible. Because for me, it ain't nothing but a thing. Because God has blessed me like that. I know he's blessed you like that. I know he's blessed some of y'all like that. So it's up to you if you want to give it. If not, just give something, get as close as you can to help us support and underwrite the conference for today and tomorrow because I don't know, Pastor Shah, it's this thing with Christians sometimes, they think that it runs on air. They don't think the church get bills, public service, the electricity bill. I know y'all a little warm, so you feel the heat working in the building. Come on now. You see the light shining, not much dirt on the carpet. The uh, musicians are working, so it takes some money to run ministry. I know sometimes y'all think it can run on $5 a month, $10 a month, but in the world we live in, when we have to check the bills and do the books, it doesn't work like that. So we can only ask you to help us. So again, as I said, we're asking everybody at can and will, whatever you're giving, please use the envelopes. I don't care if it's $5 or $500. I don't care if you're giving cash, check, or you're using one of our electronic methods. PayPal is UFG Church. Givelify is Full Gospel Church. Cash App is dollar sign UFG Church. You can use one of those electronic methods to give, but even if you do, even if you do use an electronic method, please still use an envelope. 
so that the trustees will know how to properly disperse and to dispense the finances on tonight. Is that okay? And remember, in the blank space, please write men's conference. Please write men's conference. Amen? Amen. Is everyone ready to give? Let me say this too. I forgot because I know different churches do it different ways. We don't come back for another offering. Did y'all hear me? Now, Pastor Shy is at home. He's free to move about the cabin and to move about the, uh, what they say in Star Trek, the calm. The calm is his. Once I turn the mic over, the calm is his. He can do what he want to do. But we don't ask for another offering. So even on tonight, if you're giving a speaker's offering, please put that on this envelope as well. So we believe that if you do what God tells you to do, we don't have to come back for the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost offering. We don't have to come back and ask for a speaker's offering. Are y'all here tonight? So if you do what God tells you to do, not what I'm asking you to do, but what God speaks to you, you can put it all on this one. Isn't that amazing how we can get organized and intelligent? We don't have to take this offering and come back for that offering. That means the trustees could go on the back and do their work one time. Pastor Shaw could come in and do his work, and we could send you on home. Does that make sense, men? And let's show the women that we could do it better than they can. What y'all talking about? Look at your name and tell them that part. Amen. So, again, on this envelope, you'll also see where it says speaker's offering. And we definitely want to be a blessing to this great man of God that is doing an awesome, mighty work in Jersey City. So if you are waiting, you can put your speaker's offering right in this same envelope. Put the conference offering, all of that together. And we'll make sure that he's blessed and everything else is taken care of. Amen? Amen. Now are you ready to give? So come on and stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, and we're going to pray over your seeds on tonight. And this is what I believe as a man of God, especially a man of God that has seen the works of God through my years of being in this ministry. And I've been in this ministry almost since birth, over 50 years. And I have seen the mighty move of God. But I want you to put on your mind something that you're expecting from God financially. Because we believe here that you put an assignment on your seed. You put an assignment on your seed with an expectation that God is going to respond to your request. So as you're giving on tonight, I want you to put that thought, the financial thought. Somebody needs tuition. Somebody needs a grant. Somebody's looking for a new house. Somebody's looking for a better house. Somebody's looking for a job, a new job. Somebody's thinking about retiring. Somebody wants a pay raise. I know the world is trying to tell you bonuses are done, but I believe bonuses still can come. Somebody needs some red tape cut for themselves legally. Are you hearing me on tonight? So on tonight, I want you to put that on your mind, what you need and want God to do for you financially. Amen? And as you do that, I want you to raise your seeds in your right hand. Raise your seeds in your right hand. Father, we thank you for these seeds that are raised before you on tonight. And we thank you for the gift and the giver as they prepare to sow into this good ground. And I thank you, God, right now that you make all grace abound to them, that they will have sufficiency in all things, that they will be able to give to every good work according to your will and the desires of their heart. And right now, God, as they're making an investment into this good ground that has been toiled over, that has been dug out, by Bishop Scotland Bailey, I thank you, God, hallelujah, that you will yield them a return. I declare and decree a hundredfold return. I declare and decree a multiplied harvest. God, I thank you. Even now, the anointing is flowing. You're breathing on their finance that it will stretch to do just what they needed to do. And, Father, we give you the praise and the glory. Now, I have a saying here 
I want y'all to say this with me. Tell your seed to go and grow, reproduce after your own kind, and I'll see you soon. Amen. The trustee is coming to collect your offerings on tonight. Come on, everyone, stand while they're playing. Everyone stand in this time for the word of God. Amen. And this is a man for me that needs no introduction, just a presentation. He is a friend, a friend. And we know sometimes as men of God, especially us as pastors, sometimes our friend circle is very small. Because unfortunately, you, you can't call everybody friend. Because the Bible declares, you know, to shun the very appearance of evil and be careful of those that you, as I paraphrase, allow in your cipher. Because you can be unfortunately found guilty or associated with those same works. But I thank God for this man of God. Amen. He's told me, like he said, he's originally from Jersey City, went to my alma mater, my grammar school alma mater, St. Patrick's, also went to my high school alma mater, uh, Lincoln High School, and has just been around. And we thank God for him. We thank God for the work that he is doing in the ministry. We thank God for the men. Come on, let's celebrate the men that came with him. Amen. And without further ado, I want you to help me to receive on tonight our pastor, Sharon Richardson, in his own way. Come on, put your hands together for Pastor Shah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless the Lord one more time in this place. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels still bow before him. Heaven and earth still adores him. Come on, I wish I had somebody. He's still a mighty God. Hallelujah. He's still performing miracles. Hallelujah. He's still making waves where there seems to be no way. He's still doing wonders in the lives of his people. God, we just bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity to be in the house of God. Sit down for a quick second, please. Amen. Just for a second. Amen. Amen. I want to thank and praise God for all of you tonight. Amen. Uh, didn't know the women were going to be hanging out with us. Praise the Lord, but it's good, it's good that you're here, but just understand I am speaking to the brothers. Amen. And so just, you know, don't get upset when I'm talking to these brothers. Praise the Lord. I came here with the word for the men. Uh, but tonight we actually, uh, Pastor Fields called me a couple weeks ago, and tonight's actually a service that we call The Encounter. And so it's our night of prayer and worship at WOCC. And so the ladies gave us freedom to come hang out with my brother. So they're still holding it down, amen. So I said, y'all pray, ladies, pray, amen. But I want to thank God, all the men from WOCC that came to hang out with your pastor, would you just stand real quick so we can just honor acknowledge you, brothers? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. I love these brothers, and amen. We uh, haven't had a chance to fellowship uh, as much as we would like to, so, you know, we're going to be talking about that after. Maybe after service tonight, I'm going to take all of y'all to McDonald's and uh, give you a two for two. Praise the Lord. We'll just divvy it up amongst everybody. Amen. Amen. But God is good. I thank God for Bishop uh, Scotland Bailey, man. We thank God for the man of God who's been faithfully on the vineyard. Amen. And and again, in her absence, you know, y'all know First Lady Rebecca loves this church, amen, and we love you guys. And so we're not going to prolong it, man. It's just so good to be in the house of God with men of God uh, on a Friday night. Y'all know there was a lot of places we used to be on Friday, praise the Lord, amen. 
I don't even want to talk about where I used to be. I just thank God. Amen. But say, not only did he save me, he saved me some money. Praise the Lord, because I would blow a whole paycheck on a Friday night, but we'll talk about that at another time. Amen. But listen, we want to jump into this because I have something I want to share with you, and I don't want to prolong the time. So now, if you don't mind, could you stand this last time for the reading of God's word? Amen. For the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. And tonight, uh, I'm going to be reading one verse from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. We thank God for those that are watching also on the live stream. We stream our services, so we appreciate those who take a little time out of their night just to hang out with us via live stream. Amen? Amen. Bible says, by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Move with godly fear. I need y'all to talk back to me a little bit tonight, brothers. Amen. Because the word can preach by itself. Prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. I want to read this from the Message Bible, if you don't mind. And the Bible says, by faith. Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. The result, his family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the righteousness of the believing world. And as a result, Noah became intimate with God. Tonight, for a few moments, brothers, I want to preach a question. And the question simply is to every man in this building tonight. My question and God's question is, what are you building? Amen. Would you look at two or three people and say, brother, what you building? Brother, what you building? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's pray. Now, I don't know why my musicians, I need some help, y'all. Don't stop playing on me, y'all. Praise the Lord, making me feel like I'm in the Catholic church. Y'all help me out tonight, amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank and praise you for this opportunity to stand before these great men of God. God, I pray that you use me to speak a word that will bring enlightenment, that will push us, that will cause us to be even better than we were when we walked through these doors. God, have your way. God, because when you have your way, lives are changed. Have your way, because when you have your way, things happen. When you have your way, God, we're made better because of you. Father, we bless you in advance for all that you're going to say and do in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Y'all don't mind if I hurry up and take my time, do you? Amen. What are you building. Guys, tonight I just want to take a few moments and I want to talk to us as men about the importance of number one, knowing how to trust God and also knowing how to obey God. I, I want to talk to you tonight, brothers, about the importance of us as men knowing how to trust God and knowing how to obey God. I've been doing this for a little while, and when you talk to men or bring men together, there are two things that normally happen when we speak to men. One of the things that happens is that we often overly or excessively beat our men up when they come to church because they're not what they ought to be. Amen. We, we, we often use this opportunity to add insult to injury. Amen. And so we love to tell them what they're not doing right and what they need to do better. But another thing that we do is that if we don't excessively beat them up, we overly praise them for doing what they ought to do. Amen. Because as a man, there are some things that it's good that we do what we should do if we call ourselves men. I remember a season in my life when I started opening the door for my wife. 
Amen. I wouldn't let her touch a door in Jesus' name, man. And, and, and I did it for a little while, and, and, and when I first did it, she seemed to appreciate it. Praise the Lord. She would smile at me when I opened up that door. I was like, uh, Biggie, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Amen. And so, but, but, but after a while, I noticed she wouldn't say nothing. She would just get in. And, and, and I started to wonder, did you notice that I'm still opening doors? And when she wouldn't say nothing, I would say, well, you know, you ought to be glad that you got a saved man that opens doors. Because when you look around the church, ain't many brothers like me. Amen, amen. And, and, and she, that didn't move her either. And I said, well, you know, you ought to be happy that you got a saved young black man that, that, that's opening doors for his beautiful black queen. And after me pushing her for a compliment, she said to me, I appreciate what you do, but why should I celebrate you for doing what you ought to do? She said, because if you want to make me celebrate you based on what no good dudes are doing, then your bar is too low. Are you still here? Because while I'm glad my brothers are in church, we should be in church. Well, while I'm glad my brothers show up, where else are saved men supposed to be than in the house of the Lord? Are y'all still here? And so what I want to talk a little bit tonight about is one of the things that's often overlooked, and this is why I'm glad some of the sisters are watching. Because I want to deal with some of the struggles that are overlooked that we deal with as men. Now, I know it may look easy, but I need some brothers to back me up by saying that being a man ain't as easy as it looks. Uh, I'm going to try that one more time. I said, uh, brothers, I'm giving you an opportunity to get some stuff off your chest. I said, because they think we Superman, and they don't understand I'm really Clark Kent. I just don't how to go into a phone booth when things get tight. Yeah. Being a man ain't as easy as it looks. If you don't think being a man is not hard, well, what's amazing to me is that when a man has a wife and children, when that family's in trouble, they don't ask the wife what she gonna do. They don't care if ain't nobody hiring. They expect the man to bring his family out of trouble. Are y'all still here? And so being a man ain't as easy as it looks. As a matter of fact, if we can be honest, being a black man can be downright difficult. For one, we live in a society where men are no longer celebrated for doing the things that used to define us. Amen. We're no longer celebrated for doing the things that used to define us. And at the same time, while they don't celebrate us for doing what we ought to do, they criticize us when we don't do what they expect us to do. As a matter of fact, I was watching a video a couple of days ago, a week ago, that went kind of viral. And I don't know if you saw it, but it was this one particular young lady, and she went on the first date. Mm -hmm. And somebody say first date. Now, I don't know about you. I feel so good already. This is my first date. I mean, I don't know you. If I don't know you, I'm not going to spend but so much money on you. Y'all quiet. I'm going to try to decide over here. This your first date, brother. You work hard for your money. If I'm going to take you out on a first date, I'm not saying we're going to Mickey D's. But at the same time, we're not going to Roof Crest. So the young lady was sitting in the car with the dude driving, and they pulled up to the Cheesecake Factory. And she pulled out her phone in front of the fella and started to chastise him for having the audacity to take her to the Cheesecake Factory. Now, he better than me. Because a brother like me would have put that car back in drive and pulled straight up to the Golden Arches. Y'all don't want to talk to me. But, but she chastised him. She said, look at me. Do I even look like a woman that you would take to the... Now, when did the Cheesecake Factory become bogus? 
I mean, I remember when the cheese, she, I mean, you're going to spend at least 100 bucks at the Cheesecake Factory. But, but she was basically saying, I need a man that provides for me. That's what she was saying. Now, I could go with that if you want me to be a provider, but then on the same time, when a brother shows up and says, I'm here to provide, she'll chastise him because she don't need no provider because she's a boss. Yeah. I don't need your help because I'm getting my own bag. Are y'all still here? Uh -huh. And so we are perplexed because on one hand, we're doing what we was taught to do but nobody's celebrating us for doing what they want us to do. Along with that, I don't know about you, but it seems like society now is fighting against what I call a man's man. Yeah. See, see, some of you young fellows don't understand this, but, but, but I come from a time where we, we, we had men who we considered to be men's men. Brothers like James Evans. Them young, all, all the posts y'all talk because those young people don't talk. I'll come to you in a second, but 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 brothers like James Evans, and the, the show Good Times. Good Times. James Evans was uh, such a good man that even in the projects, he wouldn't leave his family. Uh huh. And when Bookman would show up and Sam would kick y'all out the house, James Evans said, I may not have a job, but baby, I got a pool stick. Somehow, some way, I'm going to make this happen. Good Times. James Evans was a man's man. Uh, I remember brothers, I can't say this in church, but Sean, you help me out there, brother Sean. Brothers like Shaft. Shut your mouth. <laughs> he wore all black too, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, we don't even get men like Superman no more. Uh, I, 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 I remember the first Black Panther. That thing blessed my life. Hey, Amen. Kill Chachala. Amen. And I ain't mad that his sister became the next Black Panther, but did anybody else know that the sister uh, demasculated or emasculated every man in the movie? Because all of a sudden, there's something wrong with being a man's man. Yeah, if you're too masculine, that means you must be out of touch. Are y'all still here? Amen. Amen. If, you, if you're too masculine, that, that, that means that you are not learned yet. Now, now, let me help you out, because when I say being a man's man, I'm not talking about being a man that degrades his woman. It's not a man's man. I'm not talking about a man who abandons his children. That's not a man's man. I'm not talking about a man who don't communicate with nobody. That's not a man's man. I'm not talking about a man that don't show no emotions or who afraid to cry. That's not a man's man, because the truth of the matter is that a real man don't degrade his wife. He loves his wife the way Christ loves the church. A real man doesn't abuse his children. He trains up his children in the way that they should go. Amen. A real man ain't afraid to show emotions. We just show emotions like men. Amen. I had to learn, brothers leading praise and worship, I had to learn that real men praise, we just don't praise like women. Real men praise. Uh, uh, it's a difference. I had a brother in my church, Sean, know what I'm talking about, I ain't going to say who he is, and he was a man. I remember we were sitting down at the service one day, brothers, and he come in church and he skipped across the church. I said, hey, come here. I said, don't you ever skip in my presence. He said, oh, don't get it twisted, Pastor. I like women's. Women's, women's, women's. I said, okay, cool, but don't be skipping. And y'all don't want to talk. See, they don't like me. Only thing about skipping, I like it goes with jam. Why y'all quiet? Reason we quiet because we have co-signed this stuff in church. Because we think men ain't worshiping if we don't worship like women. Yeah, I'm going to cry, but it's going to be that dude cry. Yeah, he yeah, all right. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going, I don't scream, I roar. I let the ladies, ah! No, I, I wish a brother would go up two octaves. Y'all quiet up in here tonight. I'm going to preach it anyhow. Amen. Because there's nothing wrong with being a man's man. Tell your neighbor, I'm a man's man. Are you still here? But the problem is that, can I, can I preach like I feel it? Because it seems like, young men, 
this only happens in church. Muslim brothers are still men's men. Them brothers wear dresses and you still scared of them. <laughs> it's Ramadan. They got them loans and you still ain't going to run up on them because there's something about them that says I'm a worshiper, but I'm still a man. Are you still here? And so the problem is where we allow our identity for, as men to come from. Because too often, men keep changing what a man is because the world changed the man that they want. Yeah. When the world decides we don't want a man like that, the church decides because we want the world so bad, we'll change our men to make you comfortable to come into our churches. But I don't care if don't nobody show up. Pastor Shy going to be Pastor Shy. Are you still here? Because the question is not what the world says a man is. It's what does God say a man is. Because from when we look at the Bible, we can see from the very beginning of time, God's number one desire was for man to represent him in the earth. God says, I, I need you to be me on this planet. When God made man, number one, he made him in his image, but then he also gave man his authority, and he gave man his rulership over the earth. Brothers, as men, God called us and still calling us to number one lead. Amen. I, 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 how do I say this? I don't like when I see women leading their family to church and men are sitting at the house. I ain't talking about unsaved men. I'm talking about men of God who's saying, I'll see y'all when you get back. I am so glad that the brothers in my church decided we ain't going to let the women outshine us because while they over there praying, we're going to be over here supporting our man of God. Amen. Don't you let your family see you being lazy when it comes to Jesus. Men are called to provide. I'm not saying we can't get some help. But when it's all said and done, my wife knows if that job get on your nerves, quit. Because I was sent here. Are y'all still talking to me? I was sent in your life to replace what your daddy was before I showed up. If you didn't have to work under your daddy's roof, you ain't got to work under big daddy's roof. Amen. I'll receive what you bring to the table. But if you don't bring nothing to the table but your fine self, I'll pay for the table. Men were called to protect. Amen. And I heard, I was listening to a radio show, I ain't going to say what it is. But the, the females on the radio show says, my man and I are equal. I don't need him to protect me. I said, is that right? I said, well, here's what I want you to do. When you and him are laying in the bed at night, and you hear something rustling in the house, I want you to get up. Don't be saying, baby, go check it. No, you said you don't need me to protect you. You don't believe that because any brothers can testify when something breaks into the house, you better get up and act like you can handle it. Otherwise, they're going to be talking trash. Call them mama. I married a punk. He's sitting here looking at me. Because <laughs> in the end, we've been called to provide. Are y'all still here? Another thing that gets overlooked, that's the role and the responsibility of the man is that God calls us to save. God calls us. To, the salvation of the world was predicated upon the acts of a man. Whole world went into sin because of the acts of one man. As a matter of fact, read your Bible. The Bible says that Eve ate the fruit. Now, can I be honest with y'all? If I came home from work and my wife sitting there naked with an apple, I mean, you think Cardi B is fine. This the first one ever made. I know she was fine. Because he was, Adam was asleep 
when God made her. He woke up and said, whoa, man. That's why they called the woman. I let you take the. But she ate the apple. Nothing happened. She gave to her husband. He ate. And the Bible says, and then their eyes. Well, y'all missed that. She ate. Nothing happened. He ate. Their eyes were open. Because there's something that happens when we eat. As a matter of fact, after they both ate, God came through the garden. He didn't say, where's Eve? He said, Adam, where you at? And when Adam tried to say that woman, God said, shut up. I'm talking to you. God was so, what's the word, intentional about men being the Savior. That when his people were in bondage, God said, if I want to set you free, I need to send to Moses. When, when the people were getting ready to be destroyed for their stupid acts, God said, I got to destroy you because I am a God of my word, but I don't want to destroy you. And in order to not destroy you, he said, Ezekiel, find me a man that will stand in the gap and make up the hands. He said, because I couldn't find a man, I had to release what I didn't want to do. When one man, Adam, sent the world into sin, God said, the same way that it took a man to put them in the sin, I'm going to raise up another man, Jesus Christ, to bring them out of sin because there's something about a man. Are you still here? And when the world was being, getting ready to be destroyed, God raised up another man named Noah. Somebody say amen. In Genesis 6, you'll read a story that reminds me of the world today. The Bible says the world had gotten so corrupt that God was sorry that he made man. Can we talk about that a minute? Who has children? Anybody ever had some kids? I ain't saying you sorry, but you're a little upset. See, y'all don't come from this. I, I, I feel good. See, we come from a time, young people, where we got whoopings. Not discipline, whoopings. Our parents would say stuff like this. Keep it up. I kill you. Make another one look just like you. <laughs> Are y'all still here? As a matter of fact, let me take a quick little detour. I remember one time when Dyphus first came to the scene, and I heard that all you got to do is call this number. I did something so dumb. I, I messed around and ran up my father's telephone about $500. Saw the bill, knew what was coming, called Dyphus. Yeah. Dyphus came to my house. I'm cutting, moving quickly. And uh, pulled my father in the room, and they had a little conversation. He pulled me back in the room, and my father said, okay, son, uh, I see you want to call the cops on me. He said, well, here's you got two options. Y'all ready for the options? He said, uh, door number one, you can leave with these two police officers. Don't know where they're going to take you. Don't care. Ain't going to see you no more. Ain't going to see none of your friends. It is what it is. I said, what's door number two? He said, door number two, I'm going to whoop your beep, 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 beep. And I'm looking at the cops like, y'all didn't hear what he just said. <laughs> because in those days, you could raise a child that's so outside of your character that it'll make you regret that he was even born. God looked at the world and said, what are y'all doing? Can you imagine what God feels when he looks at us today? I wish I could talk it like I feel it. When you can imagine what God feels like when he looks at OnlyFans pages? Can you imagine how God feels when he goes down somebody's Instagram feed? Can, can you imagine what God feels when he looks at somebody's Facebook? I'm like, God has to say, what in the world was I thinking? But the Bible says that while the whole world was corrupt, there was this dude named Noah that found favor with God. Now, now I don't know what Noah did to find favor with God. 
but we can see Noah's righteousness in how he responded to God. Verse 11 and 7 says again, by faith, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, Noah prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. In this scripture, we can see three things that Noah did that changed his life and the life of his family. The first thing that Noah did, number one, Noah believed God just because he was God. Yeah. Noah. Noah heard a word and didn't ask any questions. I've learned sometimes men get in trouble because we ask too many questions. Yeah, because men by nature are analytical. Yeah, we, we think about stuff. This is why a woman, a wife, when she wants to go on vacation, all she's thinking about is the experience. Oh, she can see you on the beach walking down the sand. Amen. One love. Let's get it. will tell you to do something that don't make no sense. I wish I had some. This is one of the reasons why men don't praise. Because for most men, praise don't make no sense. Yeah. Why would I praise a God that I can't see? Amen, somebody. Praise him because he says so now. comes to God. Your praise to God. I trust him to provide the provision. I wish I was talking to somebody. And one night while we was riding in our new car, talking about this new church, somebody jumped their lane and knocked me and my wife around the utility pole. Can I talk a little bit more? And the blessing of that is that. I'm praying to God about
first thing he did, he believed just because it was God. Number two, after believing it was God. Old chest. Tell your neighbor, get ready for the rain. God said, no, I want you to build something to get ready for the rain. Good word. God telling you to trail. I called you to build a trail for other people to follow. Sometimes you got to learn how to do something that has no reference. Why are you looking for rain? It ain't never rained before. Are y'all still here? Yeah. Because when you build something which has no reference, there is one thing that it will bring. Haters. Bible says not only did Noah build, he was preaching, it's going to rain. I can imagine the first few months of saying, get ready for the rain. People might have been coming to the church of Noah. Man, he building something we ain't never seen before. But after one year, no rain, he lost some members. After two years, I wish I had somebody, no rain. Patient saints, are you still here? Yes, sir. See, building, if I got a drop, just a sign that I'm not building in vain. I, I wonder if anybody here has ever asked yourself, is my living? In vain. It is my tithing. In vain. Is my worship. In vain. Is my praying. In vain. And I know the song says no, of course not. But the reason somebody wrote the song is because they was in a moment where they thought that their life was in vain. Any brothers ever sat at the house and said, why do I keep going to church? I've been going for six years and my kids still ain't saved. I've been believing God for this healing for 10 years, and the doctors say I still got cancer. Amen. But, but whenever you find yourself doing something that don't work, please remember a dude named Naaman. Because the Bible says Naaman dipped six times, and ain't nothing happened. But I'm so glad that he had enough sense to keep on dipping. Amen. Because on the seventh dip, y'all wish I had somebody. Amen. And I don't know which dip is going to be your dip. But tell your brother, just keep dipping. Amen. Amen. It might be dip 18. It might be dip 23. It might be dip 35. But keep dipping until you see what God. I wish I had a church tonight because I'm going to dip until my children are saved. I'm going to dip until my family's turned around. I'm going to dip until my money is better. I'm going to keep dipping. Tell your neighbor building anyway. Amen. I know your building looks like it's in vain, but keep on building. I know they laughing because you taking your kids to church while they taking their kids to football practice. Keep building. 
I know you look silly because everybody else say, ain't nothing wrong with a little pornography, but you say, I'm going to keep my eyes, and I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. Keep building. Amen. I know folks think you dumb because you don't party no more, because while they party, I'm building. Amen. While they're running, I'm building. While they less than I'm building. While they doing stupid stuff, I'm building. Keep on. you got a lot of chicks, but I'm going to be faithful to one because I'm going to keep on building. And the third thing he did, he, number three, behaved with godliness. Are you still here? He behaved with integrity. Thank you, sir. Because there had to be something about Noah obeying God when it looked stupid that caught the attention of his family. Because the Bible says he didn't just build alone. I wish I could talk to somebody. Sometimes we're not building or our families not helping us build because they see we're not building with integrity. We build them by coming to church, but we going home talking to them. a higher power, the lower you in the streets if I say I'm going to do something my word is my bond. But I wonder how many pastors are looking at men saying, I don't believe nothing you say. Because I don't see you walking in integrity. Are y'all still here? Because if there's something I'm almost done, the world needs to see, they need to see us walking in integrity. Can I give you one more testimony? I used to be in construction. I'm a jack of many trades. And I thought that that was a small thing until one day at a dude who was a show enough gangster on the job. Yeah. He said, there was a dude who was here before you and he used to preach to all of us. But we noticed he had a lust thing because every time a good looking woman, he would. And he said, we will watch you when a good-looking woman walked by, and we saw you never turned around. And the gangster said, will you pray for me? Because I believe you got the real. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It wasn't my Bible. It wasn't my preaching. It was my integrity. See, you don't know who's watching you, amen. You don't know who's looking at you, amen. You think they're overlooking it, but they're looking at everything. Are you still here? Because I told you, because Noah did these three things, his family was influenced. I don't mean to pick on people, but it's good. Minister King, he's one of the ministers at the church. He said something Wednesday night that messed me up. He was teaching Bible study. And I told my church bishop, I said, I'm believing God this Easter for 100 souls. Don't be mad because I dream big. I ain't talking about 100 people coming to church. I'm talking about 100 people getting saved and joining the church. 
because I'm past this thing, get saved here and go join there. No, because if God saved you here, y'all want to talk to me. And so I put the church on a mission, get me 100. How old is your daughter? Seven. He said he picked her up from school this week. And she got in the car and said, that's six. She said, uh, six what? She said, that's six. Six what? That's six. Six people from my school that's coming to church. She got kids and their parents coming. She got teachers and their, y'all don't want to talk to me. Huh? Why did she have six? Because she see her daddy got Jesus. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Her father is showing her when ain't nobody looking that Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And even in hard times, I'm not going to put my religion on the side because it's my Jesus that kept me from losing my mind. It's my Jesus that kept me from going into town. The reason I ain't drunk somewhere is because I got Jesus. Because he was a man of God. He influenced his family which caused, number two, his family to follow him. Amen. Amen. Listen, it ain't that hard. If our families ain't following us, I don't blame them. I wish I had more time. Statistics say that when a woman comes to church, it's a slim percentage that the family's going to come. But when the father joins the church, it's a high statistic that everybody's going to follow him. Because the family instinctively will follow dad. I'm talking to somebody today. Amen. Listen, I told the church, listen, I don't need to try to attract women. Because if there's another, enough single men in the church, y'all want to talk to me. If there's enough single, and the women ain't going to say nothing, but if there's enough single good looking, and stand up, y'all, just real quick, wave at everybody. I'm going to pick at y'all. He's my, one of my praise and worship people. I call him Pretty Ricky. He reminds me of Christopher Williams. Don't. <laughs> yeah, I got him singing up front with his pretty stuff. I ain't going to stop him. But, but women will come where they see a man standing in place. Man's man. And listen, he light skin, but he ain't no punk. Let me just go ahead, throw that out for everybody. Hey, man, he's a man's man because he rock, he rock with his boy. But they'll follow. If you lead, lead in, somebody said, Bishop, a man and a pastor without members is just a dude taking a walk. If you a father without your family, you just a dude. But when you stand for God, I promise you, your family will follow you to God. And the last thing I'm done is that because of this, his family was influenced. His family followed him. And ultimately, his family was saved because of him. I want you to know as I take my seat, play me a little something, fellas, because I'm closing now. Give me some closing music. Praise the Lord. I love these guys. Uh, think about this. His family's life or destruction was predicated on what he built. Brothers, your wife can't build it. Our families are built off our prayers. Our families are built off our worship. If praise draws God to this house, I believe it'll draw him to my house. So I'm the praise and worship leader in my house. Because when I need a miracle, I bring the miracle worker. And I bring my wife in the room and say, baby, y'all y'all think I'm kidding. This time things got hot, I said, baby, let's praise him. In my house, me and her, we. You think I'm kidding? Because I believe that something happens when I praise God, that he inhabits the praises of his people. I don't wait for my wife to get to church to hear from God. I'm the priest of this house. Huh? I bring my wife in and say, thus saith the Lord. When my wife was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, we had been saved a year. Came home, showed me the diagnosis. 
I hadn't been saved a year, Bishop. My baby got cancer. We in our 20s. And she looking at me. What are we going to do? All I knew was to, my grandmama said, if you call on Jesus, he'll answer prayer. And the Bible says, if you get into your prayer closet, what you pray in secret, y'all don't want to talk to me. I went to that prayer closet, and I said, God, I know you didn't bring her this far for me to lose her now. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. And the Bible says, if there are any sick among you, call for the elders. I couldn't get to the elders, but in my house, I am the elder. I grabbed the oil. I said, baby, come here. I said, let me lay some hands on you. And I didn't know how to pray well, but I knew who to pray to. I said, God, I heard that you're a healer. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I got this oil right here. And I'm going to put this oil on her. And I just believe that you are able to do what your Bible says. Be healed. Y'all don't want to talk to me in Jesus' name. Sent her back to the doctor. A month later, they came back with another diagnosis. Same doctor that said you got it said we can't find it because I stood up and said, Thus saith the Lord, you shall live and not die and declare. Hallelujah, you shall. And my wife is healed because of what I built says that everywhere Abraham went, he built an altar. Am I talking right to him in the book? Guys, when the last time your family has seen you build an altar? Last story. I remember we was in North Carolina and Hurricane Fran came through. It was, it was a bad mamma jamma. In the uh, first few hours, I was full of faith, Pastor. Uh, man, we're going to be all right. Praise the Lord. They didn't stop, and the wind got stronger. I said, hold on a second now. And we lived in this old house. Wouldn't put, that, put, put together that well. And after about the third hour, I said, baby, we might need to go to my grandma's house because we like the three little pigs. She had a house of stone, <laughs> a house made out of brick. And as I was getting ready to leave, my wife said, why? I said, because her house is safe. She's at home. I watch you every night walk around this house pleading the blood. How is her house safer than our house when our house is covered by the blood? My wife watches me on my face when she gets up in the morning. I start my day in his presence. And when she gets up, she sees me and she sees that we safe. Because why is she taking a shower? I'm building. Why is she getting dressed? I'm building. Y'all want to talk to me? Amen. And so that's why she don't worry when the rain starts. Because she's been watching. What, I've been. what are we building? I'm closing. I want to leave you with this because I don't want us to walk away and build nothing. Rain is coming. It, whether you want it to come or not, it's coming. And do you want to watch your family drown because you refuse to build? Rain is coming. You want to see your kids float down the river because you wouldn't get up and go to church? I, see, you say certain things. Folks think you got to pull okie doke. I don't just cover my family in prayer. I don't just cover my family in the word. I cover my family in giving, too. I tithe because I need the windows of heaven open over my house. I, I need the devourer rebuked over my I, 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 so So I don't let her tithe and me not. Because her, her biting the apple don't change nothing. I'm the head of this house. I can't expect this house to be saved over her tithe. I'm teaching better than you. Because she ain't got the tithe. And the house is still covered. Because the priest tithes. 
So when stuff comes against us, I don't lose no sleep. When she gets troubled, I say, hey, baby, remember, you watch me build. Let's get ready to go home. Brothers, always, y'all stand with me as we close. I've been standing for an hour. You can stand for five minutes. In this men's conference, this ain't about just showing up to say we showed up. Our families should be better because we came. When you get home tonight, your wife should see you building. Your children, you should go home and, our WOCC, our wives are praying now. How are they praying all night and we can't come and pray us into the night? They going to come home on high. They've been shabba ba and da da and, and we going to just come home and go to sleep, turn the game on? No, I'm not saying don't watch the game, but they want to see was it worth it. Every time you come home, you ought to come home with a tube belt on. What you doing? I'm pulling out my prayer. Now, what you, I'm pulling out my worship because I see that we need to build. Because when you build right, your baby girl, when you ain't around, will tell other people, it's raining. And my daddy got a house where you can be safe. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for making us build. Maybe that's the reason why Jesus was a carpenter. Because our Savior was also a builder. Hallelujah. God, help us to follow the pattern of our master. God, in the same way that he built, help us to also be builders. Because not only did he build in the natural Bible says he told the church, I'll be back because I'm going to build something in heaven. I'm building a place where you can live eternally. I'm, I'm going to build a house for you. He's a builder. And if God can build a house in heaven, surely we can build our houses on earth. Help us, Father God, to pick up our tools, to do the work, to save our family, save our churches, save our community, and save our lives. We thank you for doing it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on, let's start building with our praise. Come on, let's start building with our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, God will do the drawing. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Come on, God deserves a praise after that word. What are you building? What are you building? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for our pastor Shah. <clears throat> the right man for the job. Amen. Look at your name and ask him, what are you building? And that's the thought that we want to leave with on tonight. What are you building? Did not your hearts burn within? Amen. We thank God for every one of you that came out, all the men, all the women, everyone. We thank God for all of those that travel from WOCC with our pastor Shah. We thank God for our minister Jamal leading us in worship. We thank God for all of these men working tonight. Amen. Our musicians, our media team, our audio team. Amen. Our security at the door, everybody in their proper place. Amen. Doing what God has called us to do. And we thank God. If you don't forget, tomorrow, men will be back here at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. to have our fellowship with the men. We'll be on the other side in the dining area with some food, enjoying ourselves, some games, watching the March Madness, whatever God leads. And we'll just be enjoying each other. Amen.
And then if you didn't have a chance to give, you can still give. Um, the trustees will receive your offering before you leave. We did ask every male that can and would, every person that can and would to stand with the $200 seed. So if for any reason you came in late, you want to sow into the service on tonight, you can do that. Just use one of the envelopes, electronically give, give it to the trustee. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time, this opportunity that you have gathered us together. And as we leave this place, but never from your presence, presence, God, we thank you that you would wrap your loving arms of protection around us. Go with us as we go. Take us to our separate destinations and let us arrive there safely. And God, even now, as we, the priests, are gathering here now, we thank you for the women of WOCC, God. We thank you that you are in their presence. Hallelujah. We thank you for the fresh oil that is even falling there right now. And God, we thank you that as we are here and they are there, that we'll never be the same after having this encounter with you. And God, I thank you that you will breathe on the men on tonight, that we will build as you have given us charge. We thank you that we would follow the vision. We will write the vision and make it plain, God, and we will walk out and do what you called us to do. Even though we may not see, we may not understand, but God, we thank you that we will be obedient to your call. Hallelujah. We will trust you and do what you tell us to do, to be the priest, provider, and protector so that we can save our families in these last and evil days. And God, we ask that you would even be with us on Sunday, Palm Sunday, God, as we celebrate your victorious entry into the city, God. And we thank you that you will enter each church represented here on tonight, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I touch and agree with Pastor Shah for the hundred souls that will be saved, that will be converted into the kingdom at WOCC. We declare and decree that it is so. Come on, we declare and decree that it is so. And so it shall be in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, this is the church of caring and sharing. Lord, help me to help somebody. This is the church of caring and sharing. Lord, help me to help somebody. Amen. Go with the blessings of the Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Pastor Shah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.